welcome to everyone. I am Lia Shortino, director and founder of C Junction and also associate professor at the Institute for Population and Social Research of Maidon uh, University. I am uh, very uh, glad to have uh, today Mick Chawarat. He's an expert on migration and refugee issue for the last 15 years and now with the International Detention Coalition. Uh, and you will be discussing a very important topic, which uh, is more and more uh, in the public attention. Uh, there has been recently also a very detailed report of uh, Southeast Asia Globe, uh, which has uh, discussed about the condition in the detention, migration detention center in Thailand. And there are also new policies that are being discussed as we will hear more to provide or to find alternative uh, to this uh, detention in, in Thailand and other countries. So it's a very important uh, topic and this today is part of a series of events, bi-monthly events that uh, C Junction has in collaboration with uh, the Wednesday seminar of the Institute for Population and Social Research of Maidon uh, University and some of uh, my colleagues are also here in the floor and can let her also participate. So uh, Mick, without further ado, you have about 20 minutes and then uh, we will open the floor for a question and answer. Thank you so much, Lucilia. Um, and, and hello, everyone. Um, just to say hi again, my name is Mick I'm from South, um, International Detention Coalition and I'm the Southeast Asia Program Manager. Um, um, that working on um, promoting uh, on in detention of children and also um, in, in immigration detention, sorry, and promoting alternative to detention in Thailand and Southeast Asia. Um, uh, before I, I start everything, um, if I'm not sure if you can see my slides, um, if Kun Bom can share my slides. Thank you. Okay, um, we, we can keep it in this one first. Yep, thank you. Um, just before, maybe I can uh, share some of my experience to you. So um, I've been um, engaged in the immigration detention work since um, 2016. Um, at that time, um, I worked as the project manager in um, Bangkok Child Protection Project. Um, and then there are a number of um, refugee children um, that are my uh, project clients uh, being arrested and detained in immigration detention. Um, uh, at that time, it's really difficult to, 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 to help them. Um, they've been arrested and detained and, 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 and they've been held in immigration detention for a long time. Um, and then we're trying. Um, to do uh, more advocacy on um, alternative to detention in Thailand. And that's really helpful. Um, at that time, um, I've been getting children out one by one. So each year I can get two or three children out from detention. And that's really, um, I was really happy at the time already. Um, and then after, um, after a few years, after that, um, um, there is the alternative to detention policy in Thailand, and a lot of children being released from um, detention. So right now, I think more than 300 children and family being released from from immigration detention uh, uh, from the from the policy that I would mention. Uh, I would talk about it later on. Um, next slide, please. Um, I just touched a bit, a bit about my, my organization. Um, the, my organization is the global network. It's called in, International Detention Coalition. Uh, it's just a 400 plus civil society and individual based in over 100 countries. Uh, we are working uh, at national level and at international level with government, civil society, UN agencies, and people impacted by immigration uh, by themselves um, um, to advocate Research, do conduct the research um, during the coalition building and capacity building. Um, we're trying to create an opportunity at the national, regional, and global collaboration 
uh, to reduce immigration detention and um, advocate for the right based alternative to detention. Next slide, please. Um, uh, when we want to understand immigration detention and alternative detention, I think the best thing to know, learn, um, to, to, to understand now is, is about basic information uh, of the migration movement in Thailand. Um, um, we need to understand that Thailand is the center of um, mainland Southeast Asia and has, has a long history of the uh, hub of migra migrants and refugee. Um, and due to Thailand economic growth, um, Thailand has been uh, um, become the uh, important uh, destination for migrants. And there are estimates 4.9 million non Thai residents in Thailand in 2018. Um, within, within these huge numbers, um, there are around uh, 1 to, one uh, to 2.5 million migrants uh, with irregular migration status. Um, for the refugees, which, which is also uh, being recognized as irregular uh, migration status. Uh, there are about 90,000 campus refugees from Myanmar. Um, they are uh, living in the um, nine refugee camps alongside Thailand and Myanmar border. Uh, half of them are registered with UNSCR and the other half are unregistered with UNSCR. Um, they usually not permit to leave the camps. Um, therefore, um, most of them need to rely on the uh, humanitarian assistance uh, from international organizations uh, like UN agency and, and NGOs to support to their basic needs. Um, besides the campus refugee, we also have um, 5, 000, around 5,000 urban refugee and asylum seekers from 51 countries. Um, usually they are residing in uh, Bangkok and, and, and other big cities. Um, the majority of them from Pakistan, Vietnam, and Cambodia. Um, they, right now, there is no um, national framework in place for, um, for, to protect them. Um, and currently, um, the UNSCR uh, registration document is not officially recognized by the Thai government and therefore provide no official protection to them and rely and, and that's that's the need to rely on the support from UNSCR or other um, NGOs. Um, we might need to account, take into account to the other refugee groups as well. Um, the, the number is quite unclear, um, but um, from what we are aware, there are around 52 to 54 um, Uyghurs from China. Uh, who they've been detained in immigration detention since 2014. Um, the the Rohing Rohingya refugees um, who fled to, from Myanmar to Thailand due to the ongoing persecution in the Lakhai state. Um, the Myanmar refugee who have left Myanmar uh, since the military coup in 2021 uh, 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 can be recognized within the other groups as well because it's just it's quite new and, and there is no system in place to, 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 to support them too. Um, it should be noted that this group um, has been considered as the, um, uh, uh, all of this group yeah, has been considered as the vulnerable groups to the national security and international relation and and the, the, the last, the, the Uyghurs, Myanmar, or um, new Myanmar um, refugee fled from, from the military coup, or the, the Rohingya refugee, um, all of them are not allowed by the Thai uh, government to register with UNSCR for ISD processing. Um, so that's, that's, just, that's still the main, main, main problem for them. Next slide, please. Um, 
we also might need to understand who is at risk of immigration to detention uh, immigration detention um under the thai immigration act 1979 uh, anyone who has no valid with passport or visa including refugee people seeking asylum and migrant in irregular situation can be at risk of arrest and immigration detention um, they could be charged um, for um, um, at the selling of 20,000 baht um, for um, overstay or, or illegal entry, or they could be, need to be, or they need to be imprisonment for for uh, not exist than two years as well. Um, this is the, the 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 normal legal process, but once they serve the sentence, the, this migrant will be transferred to immigration detention centers for deportation. And here there is no mix, maximum time to uh, limit uh, on their uh, detention. So when, when um, you might hear about indefinite detention um, uh, sentence um, sometimes, and that is because uh, this is, this is no limit terms for them. Uh, it's really depend on their ability um, to return to their own country or to depart from Thailand. Next slide, please. Um, we might need to understand also uh, immigration detention infrastructure and conditions. Um, at the moment, as we are aware, there are 22 immigration detention centers and also one detention center for mother and children. Um, for this mother and children center, um, from civil society side, we recognize them as another form of detention because the issue of um, um, the, the, the deprivation of liberty. Um, uh, at the moment, there is no independent monitoring take place. Um, and Currently, there are several organizations that can access to uh, immigration detention facility, including IOM, UNSCR, ICRC, and Jesuit um, Foundation. Um, that they can get into immigration detention in very really limited area. And because of the pandemic, um, this access has been very really, or more limited uh, for, for them to access as well. Um, we got the report um, that the condition of the detention are extremely poor. Uh, it is overcrowded, especially in the COVID uh, pandemic situation where uh, they cannot um, deport people. And so more people get into immigration detention. From what I aware is that their capacity is to hold, like in Bangkok, their capacity to hold uh, detainee is just uh, 1,200 to 1,400. But there are some time um, during the pandemic that uh, the number increased to almost 2,000 per day. Um, it's also a part of lack of the adequate, um, lack of adequate health service poor sanitation, inadequate food and water. Um, and you might see the news um, uh, recently uh, about the report on the abuse in detention. Um, there are the report uh, come up from time to time, but because we cannot get into the detention by ourselves, or a lot of time we receive the information from the people who release from detention, um, but that report uh, involved with the physical abuse and sometimes um, um, once in a while, we will receive the dead report as well. Um, next slide, please. So, we, so who is detained in practice? Um, based on the government report, there are 42,000 migrants has been um, arrested in 2021. So this people including uh, migrant and refugee enter in Thailand illegally, um, urban refugee and asylum seekers, um, undocumented migrant, um, refugee or um, Rohingyas or Uyghurs or even refugee from Myanmar are um, usually being arrested and detained in immigration detention. Next slide, please. Um, 
after we know about the um, situation of migrant and refugee in Thailand, um, now I want to uh, introduce you the alternative to detention, um, starting from the definition uh, and why, why we need alternative to detention. Um, there is no universally recognized the definition of alternative to detention. Usually uh, the definition employed by international detention coalition, um, this is that the alternative to detention is the range of laws, policy and practice which people at risk of immigration detention are able to live in the community without being detained or for migration related reasons. Um, ATD can involve in a range of interventions uh, in the area of migration governance that ensure migrant rights to liberty and other rights. Uh, this may include access to information, translation interpreters, um, legal assistance or reputation, um, work rights, health, education, and other service. Individual, individual screening and assessment safe and suitable placement option, case management that support the, uh, the migrant um, to have like, um, uh, to support their case solution could be, could be a, a form of alternative to detention too, and the element of alternative to detention. Uh, next slide, please. Um, there are the impacts of the immigration detention. For IDC, what we're trying to list out from the global research is that um, the immigration detention can cause harmful to health and well-being of detainees. It also interferes the, their human rights, especially um, the right to liberty and the freedom of movement. Um, um, it also does not encourage participation in case resolution processes. Uh, it is not effective deterrence for migration management. Uh, it can also expose government to litigation for unlawful detention. Uh, and most important is that it's costly uh, to both government and society. Um, for the society, um, we want, I want to uh, emphasize it more that uh, once the detainee uh, released from detention, um, the society, which is maybe an indirect cause that we can say that the society must bear the financial and social costs to address the symptom and the consequence of the detention for that person. Uh, next slide, please. Um, now here, after we hear about the impact of the immigration detention, um, we might want to hear a little more about why alternatives to detention and the benefit of them. Um, the alternative to detention support health and well-being for um, um, for the, for migrants. Um, it support the government migration management while respect and fulfill the human rights uh, of migrants. Um, it can strengthen the participation of the migrant themselves uh, to work on the case resolution and, 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 and be comply in the process. Um, they can help stabilize vulnerable um, individuals in transit and improve voluntary and independent departure rates. Uh, it can avoid wrongful detention and reduce overcrowding and long-term detention. Um, Lastly, it costs less than detention. Um, for the society level, um, what we can see is that if the migrant uh, uh, living outside in the community get the alternative to detention based on the study that we have, um, um, they can stimulate the culture exchange and also contribute to the country's socioeconomic development too. Um, next slide, please. Now, um, what are the alternatives to detention in Thailand? So in Thailand, actually, there are numbers of promising policy and practice on ATD. 
um, starting from bill and reporting, which is the one most the one that um, is the most favorite uh, approach for the immigration uh, bureau of Thailand um, that they like to use it in term to 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 release people. Um, so the Thai Immigration Act, um, actually Article Fifty Four. Um, provide the possibility of the bond security and the reporting to its authorities. Uh, in practice, the bail and coordinators are used as most uh, frequently for adult refugee, uh, people seeking asylum, those who have medical concern and significant vulnerabilities. Um, the second one is the, the MOU on ATD for children and their family. Um, the MOU on ATD has been the tool to reduce the number of children in the immigration detention centers. Um, um, like I said from the beginning that um, from the past few years, over 300 children and their family has been released from immigration detention and received assistance and social support in the community and government shelters. Next slide, please. The next ATD tools uh, policy that I want to share with you is the national screening mechanism. This is um, the brand new one um, 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 developed in 2019. 2019 um, the NSM expect to provide protect, protected person status for those unable to return to their home countries uh, for protection reasons. Um, the NSM guideline is it is in the cabinet approval stage right now, uh, but um, civil society, UN agency, and the government, um, are, we are working together in terms of preparing when the NSM start. Um, we can starting to. Um, um, I, we hope that the Thai government will start to screen um, um, uh, people who come to seeking asylum in, in Thailand uh, and, and, and gain the protected person status. Um, there are few other uh, ATD policy, just such as the National Referral Mechanism, NRM. Uh, the NRM developed for victims of trafficking in Thailand. Uh, it is a framework for screening, identification, and referral for trafficking survivors. Now, um, the Anti-Trafficking Act also mentioned that um, the, those um, um, human trafficking victims or witness uh, should not be must not be detained in immigration detention. However, in practice, um, these groups some some of them still being detained in immigration detention due to the government capacity that. Um, the, uh, like the shelter capacity would not be able to to take many of them, um, and and sometimes it's cost um, the, the identification and level of process taking delay as well. Um, the next one is the national qualification for migrant workers. So this national qualification is 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 another tool for Thailand to promote uh, the legalization of undocumented migrant. Um, workers from Cambodia, Laos, Myanmar, and Vietnam. And lastly, there are some other um, um, social service policy that can be called as the element of the alternative to detention too. For example, education for all policy that Thailand uh, has been implemented for many years, um, the health insurance scheme for migrant workers, or even the birth registration um, uh, policy for for undoc undocumented migrants. So all children uh, must be registered um, uh, and, and and receive like legal status in Thailand. Um, the next slide, please. So so there are many alternative to detention uh, policy and practice in Thailand. But what I want to bring to your attention is one of the case study that I that I have been working closely with uh, is is the MOU on ATD. Um, the MOU timelines. We might need to understand the timeline first. So, 
for the 2016, the Thai Prime Minister Prayut Chan Ocha made a press at the uh, at the, the leadership summit on refugee and migrants uh, to end Thai detention. But since then, um, uh, to, it need to take a few years to push the government to take into bring that into action, and, and that uh, require a lot of advocacy and campaign to end immigration detention at that time. Uh, in 2019, uh, uh, the Thai government successfully developed the MOU on ATD, and um, uh, this is signed by seven um, seven government ministries. Uh, in 2020, the MOU ATD SOP has been developed and Thailand become the TCM champion country on ATD for migrant children at the same time. Uh, in 2021, um, um, at the side event of the 76th session of the UN General Assembly, um, the General Director of the Department of Children and Youth also emphasized at that event that uh, Thailand will increase the use of community-based ATD. Uh, they will also develop the um, uh, monitoring and evaluation framework and implement it. Um, they also will um, strengthen um, the capacity of immigration officers and social workers nationwide to protect migrant and refugee children uh, based on their needs and vulnerability in an appropriate and standard, standardized manners. Um, and recently in May, um, at the International Migration Review Forum, Thailand also pledged uh, to the international community that they will continue to be ATD um, champion country and also implement ATD for children and put the word effectively in there. And this is something that that is quite critical for, for um, civil society, UN agency, and, and everyone to work on. Uh, so that's the timeline of the uh, ATD MOU. Um, next slide, please. Um, what we learned from ATD MOU uh, is that Thailand has adopted that MOU and implemented it from 2019. Um, what we've learned, the good things is that uh, the MOU state that uh, children should not be detained. Uh, and they're trying to look at the family-based uh, uh, care uh, and prioritize the family-based care. They look at the best interest of the child uh, and, 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 and consider that the migrant children should be supported in the community instead of in detention or shelter. So they should prioritize the community-based alternative to detention. Um, they also um, uh, have the provision of access to service and, 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 and the promotion of the collaboration between government, NGO, and civil society, uh, civil society and UN agency. Um, next slide, please. However, based on the past three years, there are still a lot of challenge as well. Um, children continue to be uh, subject to be arrested and detained in immigration detention. Um, the government also unable to expand the use of MOU at the provincial level. So many migrants and children still being um, here in the immigration detention or at the mother and child center. Um, so, so there's still this practice uh, all over the countries. Uh, Matter are uh, required bill at the high cost. Uh, right now, what we are aware is 50,000 baht, uh, but in some cases, the immigration requests more, which is uh, a lot. We need to take a lot of pressure to negotiate with the, with the government. Um, father also not typically considered to be released under the MOU, um, the family separation and pressure um, on. So, so once the father do not release with the mother, then it caused the mother become um, a single head of household. And that put a lot of pressure to the mother. And there's the lack of uh, gender um, responsive approach into this. Um, uh, um, 
MOU implementation. Um, it's, it's also uh, run the the MOU also um, um, have the multidisciplinary working group um, that consists with immigration two roles, um, Department of Children and Youth and UNSCR, IOM and, and UNICEF. Um, unfortunately, the government do not active this um, this working group, you know, as as the working group that could support uh, case planning or, or or support in terms of provide recommendation on the policy in uh, to the Thai government. Um, but I heard that they're trying to um, active this um, working group soon. Um, that's is a lot of push to that as well. And finally, um, the key thing that make uh, the MOU not become success is that um, there are the lack of resource and capacity allocated uh, for the government to implement the MOU. So that caused a lot of problem because it's really heavily rely on um, um, international organization and civil society to support the government to this. Um, I think I make that to 20. 20 minutes or more, um, but I can stop here. And then hopefully that we can discuss a bit more about the alternative uh, immigration detention and alternative to detention in Thailand um, together. Thank you. Yeah, thank you very much for this very comprehensive uh, presentation. A lot of information, detailed information that uh, not all of us uh, know. And uh, also thank you for highlighting a concrete case of uh, how it works policy into practice and the positive and still to improve side of this agreement. So we have already a few questions. I will start from one related to the position of mothers from Julie, uh, one of our participants. They, she is asking, uh, are mothers also released or only the children? And uh, of the 300, this is related to the 300 children that you have uh, mentioned. Uh, what's happened if the mother is not released? Are they being given in foster care? Uh, are some of these children have been given in foster care? And if so, uh, what is the situation of this? Uh, a second question, I will just give three questions and then uh, you can answer and then uh, we can uh, continue further uh, if there is time. Uh, the second is about this alternative uh, option, are they monitored? This is from colleagues from IPSR, are they monitored and is there any public accountability? Uh, does the public know or is there a way of monitoring um, a little bit like you have done now assessing the, the result of that? Uh, then there is a more general question uh, which relate to migrants that are in debt bondage and uh, considering them as part of trafficking then the question is whether the national uh, referral mechanism can be used uh, for these migrants that are in debt uh, bondage uh, situation. I think these are already quite important questions. We have more, but I think we do a first round. <laughs> wow, there's a lot of critical questions. <laughs> um, I try to respond that and I, I aware that there are a number of like um, colleagues from, from different organizations in this um, work um, in this discussion as well. So feel free to jump in if, if, if you like to highlight anything too. I think that that would bring a bit more like, you know, um, uh, interactive participation among us. Um, for Julie about the matter and release. Um, so, so if the child is in the process of the ATD MOU. Where, what I understanding, and a lot of time, a mother will be um, um, processed with the children. Sometimes they've been separate for, for, for wives, but uh, at the end of the day, they're trying to put them together. Um, but there are some gap of, of, of that separations. Um, 
uh, because sometimes they transfer the children to the um, the 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 children shelter first uh, when the mother is still in detention, and 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 that could cause a lot of um, um, mental um, impact to the child. Um, but that's that's what happened now, um, where mother still can be released, and I see a lot of cases that mother being released, but she required to to pay 50,000 baht bill, uh, but the shy themselves do not require to pay um, uh, the bill. Um, when you said, when I said like Korean, based on the, the last figure that I know, um, uh, early this year, the number is 377 children and family. So it should be taken into account of children and family, not just children. Um, uh, what happened to, what happened to mother? Um, I need to say that, um, like I said, that the mother, um, there are the case that mother do not being released, uh, but the child is in the shelter. So, so they don't trying to do um, community based case, community based ATD that have uh, that the child do not have parents taking care of them. Um, the next question about ATD option, uh, the mother in yes. or monitor, right? Monitor um, accountability mechanism. Yeah, I aware that um, um, organization like IOM, UNSCR, or even like OHSCHR or UNICEF also have the mandate to monitor this practice as well. Uh, but at the same time, I think that it's not really specific. Um, to the the implementation of this policy um, um, that that it come into place um, from civil society side, we're trying to do a monitoring and um, uh, this implementation as well. Uh, we do submit a lot of reports um, from um, uh, for in human right uh, mechanisms like UPR. Um, um, last time is. Um, third report as well, uh, or ICCPR three years ago. So, so we're trying to put this in the, the, the monitoring mechanism under the human rights framework. Uh, but at the same time, because the MOU itself, um, the, the, the MOU state that is required uh, the government to review this implementation every year. Uh, but since 2019, they never done that before. So what we're trying to advocate to the the, the title right now is that um, they, they, they should have, a, this is a good time for them to review um, this implementation and see, you know, what is the good practice, what is the, what are the challenges, and, and trying to be more strategic to make that decision making to change, the, to, to improve the implementation and policy. Um, finally, the question about, um, NRM. Um, the question is about uh, for uh, migrants who are in mm -hmm. that uh, bondage, uh, which can co be considered trafficking. Tra tra who are, I'm sorry, who are in the debt bondage? That they are full of debts that they. Oh. Can pay. <laughs> yeah, sorry, it's my Italian. Uh, end, but sorry. Yeah. No problem. Yeah, what the the question is refer uh, considering that they are in these conditions and they can be considered mm -hmm. trafficking, whether the national referral mechanism can be used for them. I think I think at the first thing I need to say is that um, from what I aware and, and 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 maybe some of the colleague in, in, in the room can can correct me if I'm wrong, that the uh, the NRM is 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 in the development process um, right now, um, and so um, it's not taking place yet. That's what I aware. Maybe I'm wrong, <laughs> but um, um, it might need to go back to see in the case in the specific case. It, it might need to go back to see if it in line with the Anti Human Trafficking Act is if that in line with that act, uh, then that could could be something that can 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 discuss more. But 
um, if if you or your friends in that uh, situation, I think uh, the best thing is to contact the legal, um, the the local um, NGO that support uh, on the legal assistance. Um, I think that they can provide some more, you know, support in terms of analysis of your situation and and look into, you know, which law and policy that would 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 be able to benefit for for that situation. Yeah, it was more related to whether they could be put under uh, the national referral uh, mechanism. So I think you answer uh, that, that is still in mm -hmm. process. Uh, now we still have other two questions. Uh, so we do another uh, final uh, round of, of questions related to, to actually three questions related to uh, what you presented. Uh, the first question relate to the data. Uh, the data you have uh, mentioned: how many uh, migrant, how many refugees, how many uh, people in detention center, etc. Uh, the question is: I have some question about data and numbers. Where did you get uh, the demographic information and number about migrants, refugees, etc.? Are they uh, publicly available? And if so, uh, do you think they are uh, correct? Who is collecting uh, this data? So the first yep. is the question, uh, general question about the data and the uh, validity of this data. Uh, the second question is, uh, and here I have to read because I myself, I am not fully clear, but it's uh, just curious as to who makes of the inactive multi-sectional working group mentioned in the last slide. I am assuming is what are, what is that is making that group or who is making uh, that uh, working group uh, not functioning? That is related to your last uh, ride. Okay. Okay. Uh, then, uh, Last question is about the recent approved torture uh, law uh, that has just passed, uh, which one section is uh, that uh, people cannot be sent back uh, to their country if there is uh, a suspicion that they will be tortured in another country. And uh, this is very important, of course. Uh, but then the question is, is the Thai government indeed uh, aware that they have approved uh, such a clause and what are the implications uh, for, uh, for the refugees that uh, now we have, uh, sorry, we have no clarification about uh, <laughs> the WU in the previous session. WU, make, WU makes up the group. So who, uh, this group is composed of which agency or which uh, people, which representative of which. So now it's clear. Thank you for the clarification. Uh, this is to, no, no, this is to the one who posed the question. Okay. <laughs> Ask for further clarification. Okay, so a lot to answer yeah. again. <laughs> um, um, if Kun Bom can share my slides again and go to um, slide 22. Um, slide 22, I think. This one or 22? Just, number just 20. go down to 22. Yeah, just go down for a few. This tennis. one, 22. Go down, maybe. Go down, yeah. More? Few more. <laughs> more, more. More, more, more. more. Okay. more. Uh, go back to the books. Uh, okay. So, um, it's great that you're asking for the, 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 the credibility of the data. And of course, um, at IDC, we are doing the research um, on this. And so um, there are two key research that I would like to recommend to you. One is the publishing practice in alternative to detention for children and their family. So this is the research that collect the information about um, uh, the implementation of ATD MOU, um, um, the good practice around the world, and also um, tailor it to um, um, our recommendation to the Thai government. Um, the second one, uh, go, uh, go to the next slide. 
Um, this is the um, UN Migration Network ATD mapping um, uh, that IDC are working with the UN Migration Network to produce this one, this document, and is um, consists of the Asia Pacific ATD policy and practice and trends uh, 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 in, in Asia Pacific, right? Um, just provide a brief highlight of regional trend and highlight the promising practice. Uh, if you go to the, there are two documents in this one. Uh, one is the country profile and another one is the, the summary of it. So the country profile will consist with the 19 countries analysis. Um, I need to say that uh, when we're working on this research, uh, we are working closely with UN agency in different countries. Uh, in 19 countries um, to, to support in terms of information filling as uh, data collection collection as well. And so, um, um, and with the text research that we conduct uh, as well. So uh, the information that come into my uh, presentation um, came from these two research and would like to recommend you to have a look more if you're interested. Yep, thank you, Kunbom. Yeah. Um, the second question, multidisciplinary working group. Um, so what I am aware, if, if I'm not wrong, um, the, the, the structure of the MWG my, uh, groups is that um, the, the immigration bureau is the chair of the working group and the DCY is the secretariat of the working group. And, and then they have like um, a focal point or aside focal, focal point from IOM, uh, UNSCR and UNICEF. So that's the structure of this working group. Um, uh, the working group never worked, like I said, and, and, and you're asking as well, like how, how, how we can make that active, right? So right now from civil society side, and I think that from UN agency side, as well, we're trying to push um, the immigration as a chair uh, to make it active. At the same time, I'm aware that uh, the Department of Children and Youth as the secretariat, secretariat also pushed the immigration that um, they should have this con um, uh, working group active and have like the first meeting soon. Uh, from what I'm aware, it will be next month, uh, which is finger crossed. <laughs> uh, and then they might discuss about the 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 draft of the monitoring and evaluation framework that they want to implement it in 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 relation to the alternative to detention MOE. Um, the last question uh, about the torture. Um, yes, I am aware of, of the law, the torture law. Um, 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 basically I am aware that there is the pollution of non performal in there. At the same time, it's quite critical for Thailand to take that on, and we all support, um, we civil society supporting that. Um, um, that's still in the, in, in the I, I'm aware that they're in the, still in the, the, the drafting process or approval process. So um, uh, that's quite take a time. And even though they have that policy or that law in place, they still take time to push the government to make it um, real, make it happen. Otherwise, um, it will be um, frozen in, in, in the document. Um, uh, and we see this practice a lot in the other law and policy too. So for example, like ATDMOU that I told you, um, it, it, it thought it will work well um, uh, uh, as we thought that it could be from the 2019. Uh, and that's because there is lack of um, understanding, awareness, or funding, or different things. Um, so, you know, like that is something we need to take care. Um, um, and but but want to touch bit on the principle of knowledge reform a bit because the national screening mechanism itself also um, provide um, this. Um, this also uphold this principle of non of uh, if the person's being screened and being recognized as the protect person, that person uh, will not be um, deported. 
um, or, or, or sent back to their own country. So that's, that's, that's what I answer for this. Thank you. Thank you very much. So unless there are uh, last minute uh, question, as I have asked also in the group, I think uh, we have already had a very intense uh, discussion and a lot of information uh, to digest on the data. Maybe I can add that on migration, uh, a lot of data many refer to are in the IOM migration report for Thailand, which I think 2019 was the, uh, the last one, if I am not mistaken, done by Ben Arkins as editor and multi is again a UN uh, report. I uh, was lucky to do one with my colleague Suripon Pampuing in 2009, I think, so old I am, but I think it was a very good habit to do it every year. I think more recently it's not uh, been done every year, hopefully will will be done more, but I think a lot of the data on the migration that do come from these uh, reports, but of course I think I want to put uh, we don't know, uh, I think there is no one uh, in Thailand who know exactly if they are exact and accurate uh, to the, there are estimation most, most of them because of exactly. the large number of irregular uh, migrants. So our estimation, uh, which may be more or less valid, but there remain still uh, uh, estimation. So especially for refugees, I think it's very difficult to uh, to know exactly. For instance, uh, the people coming from Myanmar now after the coup, I think we still don't have a very good idea of, especially for urban refugee, uh, not the one that are in Mysot on the border, but the one who are in Bangkok or uh, Chiang Mai, I think is still uh, very much a question of uh, how many there are. So yes, the number given indication, but still to take it with some uh, caution. Uh, that said, uh, I think, thank you, uh, Mick, for this very interesting uh, presentation. And as we discussed before this event, uh, we hope that would, we, we could do later on uh, as a follow-up and in-person event, inviting also people from uh, the government and other uh, agencies like UN agencies that are involved. So hopefully we can organize this uh, in, in due time. I mean, it will take some yeah but uh, I think will be a useful uh, follow-up. Uh, so with this... Um, I'm like... Lucilia, if I can can, can, can yes. put my final point in here, I okay. think that it might be useful. Um, um, I mean, I've been talking a lot about the alternative to detentions and the, the, the implementation of it for a while, but I think that um, 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 in terms of the migration governance in Thailand, a lot of time you might see that the Thai government um, always use the word uh, balancing between humanitarian and human uh, humanitarian and national security, uh, and that come into form into their policy as well. Um, um, it should be take into account that on the migration context, the, the, the theme of human rights, the framework of human rights just came in to Thailand in, I would say, recent years, like several years only, it's still new for Thai government. But what, what we see the Thai government trying to do now is they're trying to incorporate between human rights, humanitarian and national security now. So we could, we could see that, that they are starting to be a lot more active in the uh, international community, especially in the human rights mecha uh, mechanisms, as well as you could see a lot of like um, law and policy that um, uh, um, and, uh, what you call like fulfill and 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 put and promote the right of of migrants in more in recent years. Um, but still, the Thai government still um, do not. In, do not go into the long-term vision yet. Uh, uh, they, don't, they don't have that, um, um, they don't look it uh, in terms of the development yet. So the missing part in Thailand right now is that how the Thai 
um, Thai government and civil society can look at the migration um, um, of migrants um, population as the opportunity um, and, 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 and how the migrant can contribute to the society or the, the, the country of Thailand. Um, that is still the big missing gap, but I think we are on the right path um, to, to, to promote the right of, of migrants and refugees in Thailand. So that's I want to, to, to share it here uh, so that that can bring it to further discussion next time. Yeah, I think it's very important to remain optimistic. I think is especially if we want to continue to work on this difficult issue. At the same time, out of honesty, I also need to read uh, a comment that just arrived from John. I suspect with John it is, but let's say it's just John. And uh, his comment is, in all this challenge, I am seeing a huge elephant uh, in the room. I related uh, to the participant to think about who the elephant or the elephants are uh, in this room. But uh, I think it's very good indeed to conclude with Mick's uh, word that in spite of the challenge and the elephants, still uh, things are uh, moving and uh, there is improvement, although there are still a lot of things to be uh, changed for the better or reformed, but uh, things are slowly uh, moving for uh, the well-being, changing this uh, detention, uh, immigration detention uh, policy. I want to check with my colleague with IPSR uh, if there is any last comment. No, then yes. Uh, uh, I don't have any specific comments, but just want to thank uh, Kun Mik um, for the presentation. And also it's been enlightening because I, I don't have any um, knowledge about this situation. I have a, quite a, a surface knowledge about this. And yeah, it's been good to you know, learn a little bit deeper about the situation right now. So thank you very much. Okay. Oh, no, the same. I'd like to hear more about elephants and any other <laughs> animals in the room. <laughs> uh, that we will ask Mr. John, but uh, okay. I think, as I say, we hope to have a follow up and uh, continue uh, this discussion uh, with Mick and others. So uh, thank you again. I don't see Mick anymore. I hope he didn't disappear. <laughs> oh, he's there. Okay. I was worried about the, ele <laughs> the elephants to continue. But no, you are here with us still and uh, very glad that you have been with us and once more uh, I hope to see you again and involved again in this activity and I uh, thank you to IPSR Madon for uh, Maidon University for uh, collaborating with us particularly with the Wednesday uh, seminar and uh, we will continue in two months uh, time and we will inform uh, the new topic uh, very soon. Uh, thank you again to all for attending and have a good evening. Bye bye. Sawadika. Thank you so much. Bye bye.